I want to mention one additional thing before I leave this chamber, probably my last time to speak this year. So I'll mention a piece of legislation that I'll be introducing next year. This too is very near and dear to my heart. I don't expect everybody to understand this piece of legislation, but it's pretty important to me and pretty important to a lot of other people. And for many people who are not aware of the circumstance, it's pretty important to them too. In my research, we discovered that this House of Representatives on July 18th of 1956 accorded congressional gold medals to Confederate soldiers. Congressional gold medals to Confederate soldiers. We live in a country where we revile the slaves, those who were enslaved, my ancestors. We revile my ancestors who were enslaved and we revere by virtue of our actions. That's some proof of it, there's much more. But we revere those who were the enslavers. Revile the enslaved and revere the enslaver. I refuse to accept it. I, there's something in the way I have been wired that just won't allow me to accept certain things. This is a wrong that has to be corrected. When I say revile the enslaved, let's examine that statement this statement of reviling the enslaved. Who, what does it mean to be enslaved? Or what did it mean to be enslaved in this country? It's almost a word for polite society to say enslaved. Because the truth of the matter is, for this to occur, someone was kidnapped, stolen, stolen from their homeland. And by the way, a good many of them were sold into slavery by people from their own land, a good many. So we cannot, we cannot cheat history. We can't overlook certain facts because they're uncomfortable. I don't feel good knowing that people of African origin sold other people of African origin into slavery, but it's the truth, undeniable truth. And I have to accept the truth. And I just pray that others will accept the fact that there were many that were kidnapped, put on a ship, and then brought across the vast ocean. But it wasn't just that simple. Easy to say those words. But those words, when properly amended, would include those who didn't make it across the ocean. Those who were thrown over to the shark-infested waters Sharks would follow the ships, waiting for bodies to be thrown over to feast upon. Just to say that they traverse the ocean doesn't include how they were shackled and chained, treated like lumber, treated like just another piece of property to be brought from point A to point B. Just to say they were brought to this country 
does not acknowledge that along the way, women were raped. Along the way, they were dropped off at various ports. And that at, at some point, they were sold. Families were separated. You just, to just say they were, they were brought here or kidnapped doesn't speak to how many were brutalized. Yet, they were brought here, forced into labor, and they served this country for centuries. Here is a fact that ought to cause somebody to pause. We enslaved baby, babies in this country. We enslaved babies. If you were born of parents that were slaves, then you were a slave at birth. Many lived born, lived, and died, human beings, as slaves. So it's, it's just not enough to say they were slaves without explaining their circumstance. Forced into labor, forced to do unthinkable things. It was their humble hands that helped to facilitate the construction of the Capitol, the White House, roads and bridges, planted the seeds, perfected the harvest, literally, in some cases, fed the masters. Yet, they are reviled. And the Confederate soldiers are revered. I am going to ask this house to correct the injustice to the extent that the injustice can be corrected. If we can accord congressional gold medals to the Confederate soldiers, then we can accord congressional gold medals to those who were enslaved. I believe that there's a certain amount of righteousness in this house. I have been told that it'll never happen, but I, I, I believe that there's a certain amount of righteousness in this house for people to see the injustice in this. I just believe that there are people who who will take a stand with me. I don't know how many, but I hope that we'll have 290 because that's what it will take to pass this type of uh, resolution. And I hope that the Senate will take it up. And I hope that the Senate will pass the resolution as well. And I'd like to see a president of the United States place these congressional gold medals in appropriate venues. We, we've granted gold medals, by the way, congressional gold medals posthumously. Yes, we have. So that there's, there's nothing but the will that's missing. The way is clearly there. It's just a question of will. The question of will we revere the slave to the extent that we revere the enslavers. I believe there's a certain amount of righteousness that will allow this to happen. I don't believe that everybody that we assume will vote or not participate in a positive way in this type of debate. I don't believe that we should assume that everybody that we already assume <laughs> will do this uh, I, I just think that there are some people 
they have principle within that we have not necessarily seen. And that they'll stand forward. And that they'll challenge those who would see things differently and conclude, no, we can't do this. Well, why? We can. So I just believe that there are people of goodwill who will take a stand for the righteousness associated with giving those who, who worked and lived and died as slaves, giving them a congressional gold medal just as we gave the persons who sought to keep them in bondage congressional gold medals. I will be asking for this next year. I've already prepared the dear colleague I have within my hands the dear colleague that we will be circulating. And there will be some people who will be offended because I have said that the Confederate soldiers were enslavers. Well, they fought to maintain slavery. Now, I know that there are many who are going to say they were fighting for economic reasons. Well, that economic reason had to do with slavery, but whatever you choose to think, put that aside, if you would, and just look at what happened to the people. Let's, let's try to correct this injustice. So I'll be circulating the um, dear colleague, and I will let the world know the progress that we're making. This is the kind of thing that you don't simply put in motion and then see if it'll make its way to the finish line. I'm not wired that way to just watch and see what happens. I plan to announce the names of those who have signed on. Those who sign on, I plan to announce their name, and I plan to thank them for signing on. Thank them for, for doing a righteous thing hundreds of years after the event that occurred. I will, I will keep a log, and I will let the world know who's signing on to the legislation. I, I, I just believe that we need this kind of transparency. By the way, it won't surprise me to know that there will be people who won't sign on, but I just believe that there are enough who will such that this can move. And my hope is that those who will have an antithetical view as it relates to this, who may be of the same hue as I. Yes, there are some people who look like me who will have an antithetic, antithetical point of view because there are some who are going to say, keep the metal, give us the gold. They'll make this an issue associated with reparations and, and they'll say, Let, let's, let's go for the reparations. I'm going for dignity. I want respect. Gold can't buy it. I'm not opposed to what those efforts. But I would hope that they would be opposed to these efforts. But I'm addressing it now because I want people to understand that that will not deter me. I, I believe that we have a duty to the people that help this country become the great country it is. I call them the foundational mothers and fathers of the country, those who were enslaved, the economic foundational mothers and fathers, because they helped to build the economy. They gave us the start that we, we, we benefit from to this day. So I, to those who would say, let's just go for the gold, uh, you do what you choose. I, I'm not getting in your way. But this is about dignity, and this is about Maya Angelou's commentary that 
some of us, she said, we are the hope and dream of the slave. They never had what I have. But I have what I have because they survived and suffered such that my parents and my grandparents and those that I associate with my lineage produced me. So, Mr. Speaker, as I close tonight, perhaps for the last time this year, at a special order, I want to express my gratitude not only to those in this house who have shown me kindness and have been of great benefit, but I want to express my gratitude beyond the walls of the Capitol buildings. I want to express my gratitude to a country that has noble ideals, noble ideals. I am grateful to live in this country. I am proud to wear this necktie. I love this country. I love it because I believe that we can make real these noble ideals of liberty and justice for all, that we, we have, as Lincoln put it, government of the people, by the people, for the people, but we have to protect it. I believe that all persons are truly created equal and endowed by the Creator with these inalienable rights, among them life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I love my country. I just want to make my country, help my country, live up to these great ideals. And among them, as I thank the, the country itself and the people within it, among these great things that we can do would include honoring those persons who were brought here in chains, the foundational mothers and fathers, economic foundational, foundational economic mothers and fathers of this country, and babies, I might add, as well. Um, my last opportunity to speak this year, but I'll be back if it's God's will. And when I come back, I'm, I'm humble, but I'm not the, the person who is going to be so humble as to walk away from my duty. That's not me. I'm not wired that way. I'll be back, and I'll have these two. No, I'm praying that Mr. Avalos will be home with his family and I'll be presenting this piece of legislation for us to correct a centuries-old injustice. Thank you, Madam Speaker Pelosi, for all you've done. Thank you, Mr. Hoyer. You have been a great help. Thank you, Mr. Clyburn, for the, the sage advice you've accorded. All of the persons in leadership, I thank the newly formed leadership that's coming in, I appreciate and will celebrate and work with you. But I also plan to appreciate and celebrate and work with persons across the aisle. I, I, um, I believe in compromise. I abhor capitulation. I don't want persons to capitulate as it relates to me and what I present, and I trust that they don't want me to capitulate as it relates to them and what they present. I think cooperation and a certain degree of negotiation will allow us to get some great things done. So I look forward to working with all. I am grateful. And I yield back the balance of my time. God bless the best. The gentleman